I'm Dr. Sophia Webster. I'm a consultant obstetrician from Newcastle on Tyne in the north of England, and I'm a fellow of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. I'm pretty experienced with vacuum assisted and forceps delivery, and today we're going to go through the steps that I think are necessary to do a safe Kiwi vacuum assisted delivery. So the first thing to do is to really get to know your patient, to build trust and rapport. And then you need to decide how you're going to expedite her delivery. So you should have a valid indication. Of course, the most common indications are presumed fetal compromise or a prolonged second stage of labor. The next thing you need to do is to thoroughly assess the patient clinically. So that would involve an abdominal examination and a vaginal examination. And you should understand where she has got to in her labor progress. And um, you also want to communicate well with the mother, with her birth partners, with any other healthcare professionals that are looking after her during her birth process. And you want to take consent and explain really clearly what you're going to do. You also need to make sure that you yourself have got the necessary experience to be going ahead with a Kiwi vacuum assisted delivery. And if not, then you would need to make sure that you're being directly supervised by someone, um, someone that, that has got that experience. So um, we'll, move on to the, we'll move on to the model now and we'll walk through the steps. So um, like we said, you're going to first examine the patient. So you're going to do an abdominal palpation and you're going to check that there's no more than one fifth of the baby's head palpable per abdomen. You're going to do a vaginal assessment. Um, and when you do your vaginal assessment, you're looking for the fact that the cervix is fully dilated um, and the membranes are absent, and then you want to check the fetal position. That's whether the baby is in a occipital anterior, posterior, or transverse position. You also want to check whether there's caput and molding, and if so, the degrees of those. And you want to check that when the mother pushes with the contraction, there's some descent of the, the, the baby's head, because that would be very necessary for the vacuum-assisted delivery. Of course, you're also looking at the color of the lycor, whether there's any meconium, whether there's any blood. And the other thing that you need to do before you then go ahead and do your vacuum delivery is to know how long the middle finger on your examining hand is. So you're going to use your hand and specifically your longest finger, so your middle finger, as a ruler later on in the process. So the important distances are the distance from the fingertip to the proximal interphalangeal joint. So you can see for me using that, this uterine sound, the distance is five and a half centimeters from the tip to the proximal interphalangeal joint. So on average, it's between five and seven centimeters. And you also want to know the distance from the fingertip to the metacarpophalangeal joint. So again, using the uterine sound, we can check. So for me, I'm 10 centimeters. So that means that you can use your finger as a ruler to many, measure any other distance and estimate any other distance that you would need to do. So now I'm going to put my gloves on. We've already examined the patient, like we said, and we're going to go through the five step technique for a Kiwi vacuum assisted delivery. So step one, we're going to locate the flexion point and calculate the cup insertion distance. So definitely fully dilated. There's plus of molding, not much caput there. And I can feel the baby's position here. So we've got the posterior fontanelle here at 12 o'clock and the sagittal suture is running through the maternal midline. So we're going to put our middle finger of examining hand on the posterior fontanelle, and then we're going to estimate three centimeters along the sagittal suture, which will take us to the flexion point. One, two, three. So my finger's now on the flexion point. Using my opposite hand, I'm going to mark where the finger exits the introitus. And I know for me, based on my prior measurements, that that's five centimeters. That's our cup insertion distance. The next thing we're going to do is step two. We're going to take the kiwi and we're going to insert it into the vagina, onto the baby's head. The ideal way to hold the cup is to put your thumb in the groove so that when you place the cup inside, the groove is at 12 o'clock. The benefit of having the groove at 12 o'clock is that so that you can see if any rotation is happening as the delivery progresses. But it's really important to know that the function of the Kiwi cup um, is not dependent on the groove being at 12 o'clock. That means that if when you insert the cup, the groove is at nine o'clock or is at six o'clock, you mustn't worry about that. And I would advise against doing too much maneuvering of the cup once it's inside the vagina. The other really important thing is not to cover the cup in lots of lubricant 
In fact, you should try and keep the cup as dry as possible. So if you're going to use lube, just use a small amount on the back of the cup, definitely not on the side of the cup that's going to attach to the baby's head. So using your non-examining hand, you'll create some space in the vaginal introitus, and then you're going to insert your cup sideways onto the head of the baby. And what you need to just check then is that the cup um, is on the baby's head in the midline of the mother's pelvis. And as soon as you're confident that that's the case, you take your hand out and we move on to step three. So step three is moving the cup from where it is um, onto the flexion point. So the easiest way to do that is to take the middle finger of your examining hand, put it above the cup at 12 o'clock and slide the cup downwards until you get to the measurement, the cup insertion distance that you measured before. So you can see here that we're sliding until we get to the five centimeters that I measured before. And that's the end of step three. So step four, we're now going to create the vacuum. So in my opinion, the easiest way to do that is to keep your hand here and with your non-examining hand, initiate the suction. And most people, they then prefer once the suction is initiated, to continue with their dominant hand, which is perhaps a bit stronger. And you want to do that until you're at the top of the green so that no green is showing anymore. And that's 60 millimeters of um, mercury. So then we're going to just run our finger around so that we can check that there's no vaginal mucosa, no maternal tissue trapped under the cup before we initiate our traction. And then we're gonna move on to step five, which is initiating our traction. Some very important facts here are that um, you want to, as much as possible, maintain a 90 degree angle between the cup and the stem of the kiwi um, during your traction um, forces. And you also, it's a two-handed technique. So when you hold the kiwi, you're going to have two fingers either side of the center here, but your non-examining hands, you're going to have your thumb on the back of the kiwi cup and your first finger, your index finger on the head of the baby. And that's so that you can feel whether there's going to be a pop off and also so that you can monitor descent. Then we make sure that the mother's ready, the, the midwife, the nurse, the birthing partner's ready. And we're working as a team. So when the mother has a contraction and then when she pushes, that's when we're going to initiate our traction force from, from below. So could you let me know when you've got a, a contraction, please? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so contraction starting. So we're pulling with a 90 degree angle between the cup and the stem. I can feel that the baby's head is descending appropriately. And I pull like this, keeping a cup stem angle of 90 degrees until the mother's maternal effort has finished. If you just stop there. And then when the maternal effort finishes, you can see that I'm not keeping any traction force at all here from below because that would be a risk factor for a pop-off. Another You've got another contraction coming. So we pull again, cup stem angle 90 degrees. Okay, and then as the baby's head's crowning, we're assessing for episiotomy. That would be at 60 degrees if necessary. And I'd have a low threshold to do an episiotomy for a woman in her first vaginal birth. And then we're going to do manual perineal protection, whereby my dominant hand is supporting the perineal tissues and my non-dominant hand is controlling the speed with which the baby's head is born. Once the baby's head is, is delivered and whilst we're waiting for the, the shoulders and the rest of the baby to be born, then we would release our vacuum suction and we do that by pressing the vacuum release button. Also very important for your personal practice to check where your cup was placed on the baby's head and indeed on this occasion we were placed nicely over the flexion point and then we would deliver the rest of the baby as per normal onto the mother 